morning students thank you for coming today i am teacher angelica and today we will going to have a discussion about leptospirosis um, let's make this morning an effective one through listening to me please lend me your ears and let me foster your curiosities about leptospirosis okay so class have you already heard about leptospirosis Okay, so most of us are already familiar with this one. We often hear this word through news, especially if we are having typhoons that leads to flooding. Okay, so now let us start off by decoding first the meaning of leptospirosis. Okay, so what is leptospirosis? So according to Wikipedia, leptospirosis is a bacterial disease that affects humans and animals. It is caused by bacteria of the genus Leptospira. Okay, so this is the this is an image of bacteria Leptospira. Okay, so if you are going to look at it, um, its shape is like a sp spherical. Okay, so Leptospirosis is a rare bacterial infection we get from animals, especially from their urine so this leptospirosis is caused by infection again with leptospira bacteria leptospirosis take note that uh, leptospirosis is a zoonotic disease meaning it can be spread from animals to people so it is seasonal with the peak incidence during the rainy months is particularly in our country Philippines during the month of July to October okay so now let us proceed to the signs and symptoms okay so in humans leptospirosis can cause a wide range of symptoms okay so these are the following symptoms we have headache first we have headache second we have high fever of course we uh, we have chills muscle aches vomiting jaundice or yellow skin and eyes red eyes abdominal pain and diarrhea okay so those are the following symptoms and signs if you are having a leptospirosis Okay, so, so in leptospirosis may occur in two phases. Okay, so illness usually abrupt begins abruptly with fever and other symptoms. So uh, we have the first phase and the second phase. Okay, so let us uh, first focus in the first phase. Okay, so first phase is uh, also called septicemic or acute phase okay so in this phase um, a patient uh, may feel uh, or may uh, experience fever chills headache muscle aches vomiting and diarrhea okay while in second phase or also called the immune or delayed phase the patient may uh, experience kidney or liver, liver rather failure and meningitis okay so if you are going to observe the second phase is more severe than the first phase okay so now let us proceed when to see a doctor Okay, so to check for leptospirosis, your doctor does a simple blood test and examines the blood for antibodies. So these are organisms your body produces to fight the bacteria. If you have had the disease in your system before, the blood test may give a false positive or show antibodies from the previous infection so your doctor will likely do a second test about a week later to make sure the results are correct okay so probably if you are already experiencing uh, those symptoms we have had discussed um, a while ago that is the time to see a doctor okay so 
Now let's proceed to the causes of leptospirosis. Okay, so leptospirosis also caused by some following human activities like deforestation, rapid urbanization, poor sanitation, and increased incidence of typhoons brought about by climate changes. Okay, so we have the following um, causes of leptospirosis here. Okay, so le the leptospirobacteria can exist in raccoons, bats, sheep, dogs, mice, rats, horses, cattle, buffaloes, and pigs. Okay, so the bacteria inhabit the animal's uh, kidneys and are expelled through urination, infecting the soil or water supplies. Okay, so the bacteria can remain in the soil or water for months. Okay, so as I've said a while ago, uh, leptospirosis can also cause uh, through uh, following human activities like deforestation, rapid urbanization, poor sanitation, and increased incidence of typhoons brought about by climate changes. Okay, so uh, the, the disease has uh, also been associated with uh, human activities like uh, swimming, uh, wading and rafting in contaminated lakes and rivers. So, as such, it is a recreational hazard for campers. No, campers are those people who do camping. So, uh, or those people who participate outdoor sports. So, the risk is likely greater for those who participate in these activities, particularly in tropical or temperate climates during summer and fall so our country philippines is um, um is an um better example for that okay so now let us proceed to the risk factors okay so if you are going to look at the picture we have uh here um the fish workers the second picture the farmers and people who um, who risk the, um, themselves to um, go to the um, flooded areas. No? Okay, so we also have veterinarians and animal caretakers, mine workers, military personnel. So uh, these individuals are most likely um, to have leptospirosis because um, they always uh, they are always go to um, places that um, that has a high risk of leptospirosis. Okay, so now let's proceed to the complications. Okay, so if leptospirosis is left untreated or without treatment, it can lead to life-threatening situations. Leptospirosis can lead to kidney damage, meningitis, liver failure, respiratory distress, and even death. Okay, so as I've said, it can affect the liver, uh, kidneys, and other organs of humans, um, and of course, animals. Okay, so let's proceed to the treatment. Okay, so don't worry because um, leptospirosis can be treated. Okay, so leptospirosis can be treated with antibiotics including penicillin and doxycycline um, tablets. Okay, so your doctor may also recommend ibuprofen for fever and muscle pain. Okay, so just take note um, that we use or take doxycycline um, if we are having mild cases while uh, we use penicillin if we are already having severe cases okay so uh, for patients who um, experience severe cases it is prescribed 
for them to take penicillin. Okay, so the duration of treatment for severe cases is usually seven days. Okay, so now we are going to discuss the preventions. Okay, so here are the things you must do to avoid having leptospirosis. Okay, so first we have to avoid contaminated water. So uh, we should or we must avoid touching fresh water or soil that may be contaminated with animal urine, especially the urine of rats and uh, rodents. Okay, so we should not wade, swim, or put our feet in flood waters or water from lakes. Second, we must keep away from infected animals, especially wild rats. Three, we should wear protective clothing like boots, gloves, and masks when contact with flood water is unavoidable. Fourth, we should wash and clean all wounds, especially those on the feet and legs. And lastly, we must maintain cleanliness. Okay, so now we are already uh, familiar and we already have the knowledge um, about leptospirosis. So I hope that um, all of the knowledge that uh, you have learned today um, may be a lesson and all the preventions, of course, um, you must apply all those uh, for us to be 100% leptus leptospirosis free. Okay, so again, good morning, my dear students. I am teacher Angelica and I am happy that uh, you are already, uh, you already know about leptospirosis. Okay, so thank you for coming today again and thank you for listening. Bye!